Praise the Lord. We appreciate the Lord for his mercies. Please, and let's be seated. We thank him for thus far. He has been with us and has helped us in the 40 days of power. Yesterday, we began to open our eyes to the spoilers, things that spoils revival, things that we must avoid if the revival that is bringing upon us will last. We are going to press on in our study of the book of Acts. Let's read from verse 1 of chapter 5. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira his wife sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, And now as why had certain fear that I had to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land. While it remained, was he not thy own? And after it was sold, was he not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men but unto God. But Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came upon all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yeah, for so much. Then Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straight away at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead and carried her forth, buried her by her husband. And a great fear came up upon all the church, and not only the church, upon as many as heard these things. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's book. And of the rest does not no man join himself to them, but the people magnify them. And believers, we are the more added to the Lord. Multitudes both of men and women, in so much that they brought forth the sick into the street and laid them on beds and couches. That at the least, at least, the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. Everyone. There is an atmosphere that characterizes this revival we have been studying. From the place we read today, we saw that because of the atmosphere of this revival, some certain things cannot thrive cannot succeed. You know, I kept on telling us that the study of the book of Acts is not just for us to gather knowledge. 
is not just for us to know more than we have known, but for us to radically change and adjust ourselves to the things that the Lord is showing us. Because this is the book that, I mean, showed us what genuine revival, heaven-sent revival should be. And any deviation from what we are seeing here in our time, we have to go back. We have to recover. Now, you see, there is an atmosphere that a cockroach cannot survive. When you spread some kind of, you know, um, insecticide in this place now, you will notice that every cockroach that is here will start running. And they will have to die if they don't run, run away fast. They can't survive in this atmosphere. There are some certain things that when you look at the church today, the body of Christ, when you look at some congregations, some denominations, when you study the life of the people that are in the fellowship, in the discipleship, and you will compare it with what you are seeing in the book of Acts, you will be sorry for what we are experiencing, and you will, you will see how far we are from the atmosphere of revival. Just imagine that somebody told a lie. You know, the, the problem is not that Ananias told a lie. The problem was that he told a lie in an atmosphere that has zero tolerance for lying. That was why his life went for it. Listen carefully. You know, when we are looking at ourselves today, you wonder how worst our sins, our lies has been, and yet we didn't die like Ananias. Why? Atmosphere. Atmosphere. So you can see that even in the, in the fellowship, I remember some years ago, a lady that came for counseling and I was asking her a question. She told me that she is living in fornication. She belonged to a, a very, you know, if you hear the name of the Pentecostal church. And then she is committing fornication with another brother from another Pentecostal church. No, it's not a news. It is a common thing. It, it, the atmosphere of today's church, atmosphere of today's fellowship is full of sin. It can accommodate anything. It can tolerate anything called sin. Atmosphere. When you enter a particular place, there is a kind of atmosphere you are going to sense. You know, these, are, and, these and these are not tolerated here. Are, are you following me at all? Now, you see, until we recover the atmosphere of the real revival, we, we have not done anything. We are still backward. Look at what happened. See, you know, I have met people that came for counseling. I mean, on several occasions, you notice that the kind of sin that they committed, what Ananias did here is, I mean, you, you can't even, on a normal because I don't know whether Peter really asked him a question. Because there's no record. Maybe he asked him. We don't see that in the record. Whether is this the amount you sold the land? It was not recorded. Peter just sensed that this is not the amount. And now began to, you know, saw that he's trying to present it as the amount. But we can see a situation where somebody, we, a believer, a, somebody who says he's a believer anyway, we be telling lies. I mean, without any, any fear. Are you talking about the way people watch pornography? Commit masturbation? The way people are, are living in sin. In, the, in what we call, you know, the, 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 the fellowship of the believers. Now, I want us to see there are certain things that characterizes the atmosphere of revival. And that is the problem. The problem was that this kind of thing is not allowed here. This is an atmosphere. In some other places, it can be allowed, but not here. And you see, if you try it, if you dare it, there is judgment immediately. And that is what it's supposed to be. That is what it's supposed to be. We saw yesterday from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 5, where Paul was writing to the Corinthians and said, How dare you so comfortable? are you people so comfortable? Listen carefully. Because sometimes when you lost some certain senses, when you your, your senses become numb, for, for example, you know, they said during COVID, for example, they say you cannot smell, 
you cannot um you can't sense you know things you can't hear the the smell of anything around so can you imagine somebody in an environment that is so dirty so smelly and he's not even sensing or you know feeling that the person can comfortably re relax in that atmosphere but not for somebody whose senses is working i don't know whether you're getting me there is a way the corinthians relax somebody is a, he says he's a brother and he's living in fornication with his uh, father's wife and they were relaxed paul said i heard that there is fornications in your midst and he says it's not even the kind of fornication that is allowed that um, somebody is living and is still coming to fellowship and he's still giving tithe and offering but he's living in, in immorality now you see the attention of the people who that's why the church needs we, we need to keep praying don't ever imagine or begin to think that we have seen revival because number of churches are increasing because congregations are becoming larger listen you need to look at the emphasis what is even attracting or drawing people to the church yes the atmosphere of the corinthian church we are so dirty that they are not even feeling it they are not even sensing it you know there is a way a rug can be in a room smelling so much that the people that are in the room their nose has acclimatized with the smell I know what I'm talking about because I know how I had an experience some time ago with entering one brother's room. And I, I shouted on the first day. I said, what kind of smell is, is this? Where is it coming from? And he said, it's rock. I said, and you are here. I was wondering how they were surviving. I, throughout that day, I have to keep putting my, 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 my hand on my, on my nose in order to survive that day. Then I, I was now visiting that place frequently. After a while, I, I am not noticing the smell again. My, my, my nose has, I mean, acclim you know, acclimatized, has acclimatized with the, 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 the smell so that I don't feel it again, I don't smell it again. That's what we, we call atmosphere. You come in a place, you see that people are not serious with God. They come late. I mean, they, they are not, they are life. They are not, life is not showing any sense of righteousness and holiness they are not conscious of it they can joke with lies they can do all sorts of things sometimes listen it the, the sins may be committed in this in the in the in the secret but see there is no secrecy in the spirit and there is no distance in the realm of the spirit so whether you did it in the secret and come you did your own in the secret you come you did your own in the secret the atmosphere is polluted anybody that enters that atmosphere as a sinner will not even feel it at all he will just relax in the atmosphere. Now, I want you to see something. We are not yet there, but I want you to see. The Bible said that the unbelievers couldn't join them. Do you know why they couldn't join them? Look at it in verse, um, verse 13. Can we read verse 13 together? One, two, go. And of the rest does no man join himself to them, but the people magnify them. Now, listen carefully. That is if you read it from a simpler version like good news do you have good news there can you read good news for me verse 13 quickly nobody outside the group tried to join them you can't excuse me excuse me you can't try you can't it's not possible the atmosphere is too holy you can't survive here i mean you cannot survive the atmosphere they are too conscious of holiness they are too conscious of righteousness you cannot survive here are you getting that see i want you to note i'm okay i want you to note that there is an atmosphere that this revival carried which we must recover sometimes we think that when we lower the standard of the word of god we'll be able to accommodate and attract crowd <laughs> that is a compromised crowd that god is not even happy with i want us to see because you know there are certain things that if we don't press for it if we don't recover it back we will be playing thinking that we are pleasing to god that is what we call revival we we, we must have to recover we must have to recover the, this particular atmosphere the atmosphere that will not give any tolerance to sin now if everybody here is neat well dressed i mean the moment somebody who is dirty 
are you following me? Somebody who is not, has not taken his bed and is looking tattered enters here. What happens? It becomes odd. The atmosphere. I used to illustrate it with a mechanic. Are, are you getting that? Who is coming very dirty from under the car. And you ask him to sit down. Relax. Sit down. And he looked at the seat. The seat had white cushions. Everywhere clean and neat. Sit down now. Relax. Something in him is telling, telling him, I don't belong here. This is not where I can sit down. Does he mean that the mechanic cannot sit down? He can sit down. But he knew that this atmosphere is too holy for me to sit down. It's too neat. It's too clean for me. Brothers and sisters, we must press for the atmosphere of revival. We must press to recover that which characterizes. You see, I'm not talking about people meeting together and they are clapping and they are prophesying and they are doing all sorts of things. Check the atmosphere that is in that environment. Check the atmosphere. You see somebody who is living in sin with a, 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 a man and a woman living in the same room. They are not married. And they will go and they will come. They will tell you that we went for ministry. We went for prayer. We went for fellowship. We went for discipleship. Where do you go? You say you went to, to excuse me, the reason why they can go there and return back and they continue in their sin and they don't feel anything and they are even happy, ready to go and sow seed, ready to go and do is atmosphere. The church is backward. The church is, I mean, thriving on a wrong atmosphere. There's an atmosphere. See, listen, you know, this is the wonder. The wonder is, why am I telling lies? Listen carefully. Why am I, I mean, living in anger, committing worse sin, watching pornography so dirty, more than Ananias and Sapphira? And they died. Some of us, we tell lies three times a day, and you never die. The atmosphere. We must recover the atmosphere of revival. We must press for it. You know, when I was studying that, I was shocked. What happened in verse, what Peter said to Ananias in verse 3. I think it's verse 3 or so. He said, Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Why has Satan filled your heart? Do you know why you don't feel that Satan has filled your heart. Do you know you don't sense any Satan around you when you are telling lies? Atmosphere. The moment Ananias entered, something began to smell. Peter smelled it. Peter sensed it. Are, are you getting that? Something is wrong. Who entered here now? Who dropped this morning? Come, 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 come. What is happening here? He began to sense it. The sensitivity is high. I mean, you, you, cannot, you cannot tell lie here and you will not be spotted out. Because the atmosphere, this is the people of God. I am pressing and I'm praying that all of us will join in this press. We must recover this atmosphere. Where if a sinner enters, the sinner will be exposed immediately. And if you say you're a brother and you finish committing masturbation and you come to give testimony, before you finish testimony, somebody will walk up and say, excuse me, please. There is a pollution here. This brother that is giving this testimony, as he was talking, I fell into a trance. I saw where he's messing up. Brother, what is happening? And he will fall on his knee and start confessing. This is the kind of thing we are talking about. The Bible says fear came upon everybody that heard it. It is more fear because the atmosphere is exposing everything that is not in line with Christ Jesus. The Bible says Jesus he committed no sin. How dare you commit sin and you are part of his body? Paul said, how can I use a member, my body, who is a member of, of Christ, and join it to a harlot? How can I use my mouth, my brain, to you know, conjure a lie and tell it comfortably and I'm relaxed in the body of Christ? No, 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 no. Something is wrong. We are going to press both for our own personal life, this atmosphere of holiness. See, some of us, you will pick up your phone and you are watching nonsense with your phone. Do you know why? The atmosphere within your own life, within your heart, is so corrupt. You talk about, you know, because the, the atmosphere within each person is when we come together that we now have a combined effect of the atmosphere of each person. Are you getting me? 
When this person is living a holy and a righteous life and his life is so sensitive to sin, no, this person, when we come together, the atmosphere will be speaking. Any sinner that enters will be detected immediately. Why has Satan filled your heart? Now, can you, can you please understand and establish that any time a man tells lie, you are not telling lie because you just want to tell lie. You are telling lie because Satan has filled your heart. Satan has filled your heart. In John 8, 44, Jesus said, you belong to your father, the devil. Yes, he said, he is a liar from the beginning. When he tells lies, he speaks from his own natural language. And he said, he is he's not just a liar, he's the father of lies. He's what? The father of lies. When you read that verse carefully, that verse is not saying that the devil is the father of liars. We have read, mistaken that, that. Read the verse carefully. He said, the devil is father of lies. There's a difference between being father of liars and father of lies. Yes, of a truth. Every sinner belongs to Satan. First John 3 verse 8. First John 3 verse 8 says, he who continues to sin, does what? He belongs to the devil. That's so. Every liar, every fornicator, every sinner belongs to the devil. That's okay. But, what that verse Jesus is trying to point out from there is that the devil is a father of lies. He is an originator of lies. You see this fan that is blowing. You see this light that is shining. And you see this microphone that is speaking. They are all working because there is a generator that they are connected to. Whether wirelessly. This one is, you can look at it, there's no con But something is about this microphone is connected to a generator somewhere. It is the generator that is generating the power that is sustaining the effect of this. Are you getting that? So what Jesus is saying there is that the devil is a generator of lies. An originator of lies. Wherever you see lie, you must know that there is a connector between, a connection between the, the lie and who? And the generator. The father. No lie ever comes out from any, anywhere except from the devil. He is the father. He is one that is behind you. He is one that has filled your heart, filled your mind, and is giving you, you know, idea on how to, you know, arrange the lie, on how to enter into false impression, on how to, I mean, pretend, on how to be insincere, on how to praise somebody in his presence, and at his back, you are not praising him, or in your heart, you are not praising him, but with your mouth, all kinds of lies half truth, exaggeration. The devil is the father. He has filled your heart. Listen, let me repeat. When you see somebody who tells a lie, it's not a mistake. The truth is that before you tell lies, Satan has filled your heart. Satan has... You see, lying is a sin that many believers, they don't consider as serious. Believers. I'm talking about believers. They don't see... They can even... I mean... Keep quiet. In, and that quiet means lying. You know it happens. Yes. Do you are asked a question. Instead of you to say the truth, you will keep quiet. It can come up in so many ways. But anytime you are not straightforward, anytime you are not sincere, anytime there is a level of compromise or hypocrisy, no matter the reason you are giving, you may say, eh, people are shitting me when I say the truth. Hey, when you tell people the truth, they will not believe you. It's when you tell them lie, they will believe you. And because of that, you now fraternize with the devil. You now covenant yourself. You now yield your soul. And the devil has filled your heart. Unfortunately for Ananias, this is a, a, an atmosphere where it was only the Holy Spirit that filled everywhere. The Holy Spirit filled every heart. And then Satan filled one particular heart. And now he entered. Oh my God, he was detected immediately. It was, I mean, you can't survive in this atmosphere. You can't. I pray that God will bring this atmosphere back. As we meet in our discipleship families, as we meet for, 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 for fellowship, for, for, for church service, we need to extend this prayer to the body of Christ. The atmosphere of righteousness, the atmosphere of holiness, that even the unbelievers cannot survive. Listen, anybody who is seeing where signs and wonders is happening will like to be part of it, just like in our generation. Are you getting me? That's the difference. 
The difference was that signs and wonders were happening in their midst and from them. And yet, unbelievers couldn't join because that's a fundamental atmosphere that is guiding their meetings, guiding their fellowship. In our time, wherever there is signs and wonders, what happens? You see unbelievers. Everybody is going there. All kinds of people. I remember somebody coming here telling me that, you know, the reason why I'm coming is because I don't want to go to native doctor. I just want to, to come and receive miracle from you. Eh? And I said, you need to be born again. You need to be a disciple. He ran away. That's what people are looking for. They are looking for where they can get miracle, where they can get signs and wonders, where they can, you know, get breakthrough for their business and all of that. And so, as long as you don't talk about sin, that's why sometimes I was listening to a man of a renowned man of God. You know, I saw how he preached a wonderful message. Now, as he was preaching that message, people were shouting, people were standing up, people were saying, Ooh, you know, you know that kind of noise, excitement that you know the message. Truly, the message was motivational. Truly, the message was, at the end of the whole message, people were, he prayed for the people, people were blessed. Suddenly, a question rose up in my heart. I know it was the Holy Spirit. He said, what about the sinners that came to church? What about these believers that are struggling with sin? This message is powerful. It has motivated them. It, was, it has increased their faith. It has, but there are sinners here. There are, ah, where is repentance? You remember the message that they kept preaching? How will this set of people, you know, they come to church, they have received powerful encouragement and all of that, messages and all of that, but some of them are still struggling with masturbation. Some of them have a girlfriend, a boyfriend. Some of them are in courtship, but they are living in, in, in impurity. All kinds of compromise. Some of them are going to work as civil servants. They are telling lies. Telling lies. Going late and writing that will come on time. All kinds of sinful life around the believers. But the atmosphere has accommodated it. I pray that God will help us Amen. to press for the atmosphere of holiness, atmosphere of righteousness that cannot tolerate sin. And when unbelievers want to join, you will not tell them not to join. But they, they just notice that before I can join these people, I must, I must believe what they believe. Yes, I must align myself to what they align themselves to. I can't just come and be, be free, be comfortable in their midst. Today they tell you that the, ch the church is hospital. Eh? Have you heard that kind of thing? Anybody can come. And so you see people, they will come and they are relaxed. I don't see that in the book of us. It's a different story altogether. You cannot join them. It's difficult. Eh? He said, and the Lord added to the church those who are being saved. So when he saves you from sin, eh, he will now add you. He will save you from sin and then add you to the number. What other atmosphere are we seeing that characterize the revival? We have seen the atmosphere of righteousness and I'm going to press further because when you talk about holiness, the kind of atmosphere that made it so difficult, they don't have a law. They don't have archers that are to chase people out at the door and say, are you an unbeliever? Are you a believer? Don't come here. No. The atmosphere will teach you. Now, what is holiness? Total suppression from what? From sin. From what again? From idols. From what again? From the world system. And then total consecration unto God. Total separation from sin. Listen. Opposite of righteousness is sin. Now, but beyond righteousness, there is atmosphere of holiness here. And listen. The major thing, listen carefully. The major thing that distinguished these people from what we have today, even in some cycle, is holiness. We know that righteousness is there, but holiness. Holiness. You know, because a, a righteous person, listen carefully, a righteous person may not necessarily derive his righteousness source from Christ. There are some people that are righteous Muslims. Am I correct? Righteous Hindu. 
even righteous, principled, idolatrous people that worship idol. But they have, they call it keeping your hand straight. They call it self righteousness. Are you getting that? Whenever it comes to sin, eh, as you are looking at the person, you observe that this person, he does not co compromise with I mean, he doesn't tell lie. Have you met such people before? They are principled. They don't compromise. In fact, I, I think in the Western world, saying the truth has become part of their legacy and policy. So, such that if you tell lie, you, it will be, it's not, it, lying is not part of their culture. Telling the truth seems to be part of their culture. Even though they may have ways of lying, but ma majority, unlike Africa, where majority are what? That's the difference. So, now, that kind of righteousness that is derived from, I mean, self or whatever principle, it will confuse the outward manifestation of Christ's righteousness. It is the holiness, are you getting me, that will actually make the, the real mark, the real difference. And you know, the Holy Spirit, what was his title, please? There are many spirits, but this one is distinguished by his title. What is his title? He that has a title called holy. The holy, that's the only thing that there, there are ghosts, but this one is what the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. That's why you will be dreaming when you say you have the Holy Ghost in your life and you are still living in sin. Oh, no, 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 something is it's not the Holy Spirit, it's not the spirit of holiness. No, how can the spirit of holiness, the Holy Spirit, be on you? And you will open phone and you are watching pornography and you are committing masturbation. Excuse me, another spirit has come in. It can never be the Holy Spirit. Another spirit has found its way into your heart. Are you, are you getting me at all? Yes. This is the spirit that is, I mean, responsible. Listen carefully. When I teach you on holiness now, I can teach you one hour, two hours, and you'll be taking note. Who is teaching these village believers? Who doesn't know how to read and write? There's a spirit of holiness in them that is, I mean, separating them from sin, separating them from their idols, separating them from the world system, and advising them, consecrate yourself to God. Holiness is only achieved by the Holy Spirit, not by knowledge or by theory. The knowledge is an advantage for those who went, go to school. But the, the, the life of holiness is administered by the presence of the spirit in a man. That is why you can be righteous by any means, but you cannot be holy except the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in you and you are submissive and obedient to him at all times. So these are company of those in whose life each of them, I, I mean, they are submitted. They are yielded to the Holy Spirit. And when they come together, the Holy Spirit takes over. And Peter said to Ananias, you lied to the Holy Ghost. Because he is the spirit in charge here. He is the one that is taking control of everything that is going on here. Holiness. Separation. From sin. From the world system. From idols. Things that has occupied. One of the problems of Ananias is that he has come to trust money more than God. And that's the problem that we have also when we come to that point, that level. He kept back some of the money because he believed in the money. Are you getting me? When you cannot release your resources and what you have to God, you cannot give. You cannot give as God wants you to give. You, you see other people giving. Somebody come out and say, I, I, I emptied my account and all of that. And you, in your heart, you said, I cannot do it. Listen, what, what is playing out is that you have not come to trust in the Lord. You trusted in these uncertain riches more than in God, who is the giver of the money. Anything you cannot part, 
let's see we are not just talking anything any any of your 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 materials your prop property you cannot part for the sake of god and say i give it up that thing has become an idol yes you have come to place your trust in it more than in god yes separation from sin but not just sin separation from idol things that take your time your attention more than god things that you have come to trust to believe that they are going to deliver you you have trusted in your business you believe that this business is is is, is, is going to deliver you and say and, and i mean help you in the time of trouble you have trusted in your job that is why you can tell lies to retain the job that's why you can do anything to secure a job because you believe that this job is your savior you have trusted in a man a man has promised you you have trusted in your certificate in your education these are idols i mean the major problem that we even have as believers is idols that was why a very holy powerful book first john written five chapters ended with an instruction to believers not unbelievers he said little children keep yourself from idols little children keep yourself from idols i have written everything to you but there's one thing i need to end this letter with idols believers idols things that you have trusted these are the things that they take your time they take your attention they take everything your business your your job your i mean the things you have trusted your money you have put your heart jesus said where your treasure is that's where your heart is and Nias could not release that money because he has placed trust in that money yes he kept it believing that this money will save me i will use it to do this i will use it to do that and so he kept it back total separation from sin from idols from the world system that's another problem the belie unbelievers cannot join them because when you enter there with a worldly dressing you become odd are you getting me when all the sisters are well dressed dressed in a christian way nakedness properly covered and everybody is dressed not just in what we are putting on but dressed properly naturally if you enter there with all this artificiality all these kinds of clothes you will just notice that you cannot survive here the next thing is that is either you repent or you leave and go to where you can freely dress like that they cannot join them because these people have separated themselves from the world system they don't marry the way the world marry they don't drink alcohol they don't also give you alcohol and they don't also give you money to buy alcohol yes they are separated from the world way of dressing world way of marriage world way of burial they are different they are not worldly because they are separated from the world you know in second corinthians chapter 6 verse 8 uh, 14 to 18 brother paul was writing he said do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers do not be unequally yoked to he was writing to believers he said don't be unequally yoked together there are people called unbelievers there are people called what believers they are not see he's not written on the face jesus said by their fruit you shall know them yes don't join yourself to them don't let them become your associate don't let them become your fr friends people that you are consulting and you are parlaying with doing business partnership with and you are you know do no matter who the person is he said there is no there's no relationship between light and darkness you are the light of the world unbeliever is the darkness of the world there's no connection between belial and christ this, these are sons of belial this and see most times when we are talking about unbelievers our eyes are looking at the prostitutes our eyes are looking at look look inside the face look at your siblings your brothers and sisters that are not born again start from there are you are you listening to me because that's where our problem begins you are on get, getting yourself on you calling you up together with unbelievers and when they ask you you will say it's my brother we are from the same parents but excuse me is he a believer or unbeliever you are a believer he doesn't have the same value with you this is your brother listen you better call him by the right name so that if that will touch you you can start praying for him and start preaching to him stop all these things we are, we, we are doing this is an unbeliever and the bible says, don't do business with him he says he's your brother and you are doing business with him he's my brother and that's why when you violate the the, the scripture 
you will see yourself entering into problem. Are you getting me at all? Because the person you are doing business with will, will come at a particular junction in that business, will bring out his nature of cheating, of lying, and you are the lost money in your hand is in that business. Before you know it, the whole thing will crash. And most times it will crash because you are there so that you will learn a lesson that you don't violate the scripture. Yet we don't learn. Tomorrow we go again and we keep wasting our time, getting old, and the purpose of God concerning our life is not fulfilled. Yes, this emotional thing that makes us to exonerate our father, our mother, our brothers, our sisters, our uncles from the Bible, from the fact that they are unbelievers, we have to stop it. You have to be honest first and say, this is an unbeliever, even though he's my brother, but I will have to pray for him to become a believer. I will have to fast for him, but for now, he's an unbeliever and I will not be on equally yoke together with you. We don't have the same faith. We don't have, see, we don't believe in the same thing. This person, we can tell lie and do anything, commit fornication, do any kind of thing without any fear of God. But you, and yet you, you most times say, you will, you, I, I mean, it will mock you. You that say you are born again. It will mock you with your born again. So we need to observe the principles that God has given to us for the light, correct light. That was what these brethren were observing. They were all to, with one accord. They were united. This their fellowship, this their relationship is the highest thing they, ha they have ever experienced. They have ever experienced a fellowship that is uniting them. And I mean, they are enjoying themselves, enjoying the fellowship of one another as one united people. Now, look at it. The Bible said, I, I don't know. I wanted to see something if you are holding Old King James. There is a bracket that if you are studying, you need to see that bracket. Look at verse 12. He said, And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. Did you notice the bracket began? Now, that bracket ended in verse what? Verse 14. Now, what that is telling you that that bracket is an insertion. If you read verse 12 from the end of the bracket and connect it to verse 13, you will see there is a flow. Just let's read it just and connect it that way. And by the hand, hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. Verse 15. In so much, did you see that? That is the connection. In so much that they brought forth the sick onto the street. So, verse 12 and verse 15 are directly connected. Trying to tell us one of the atmosphere. Atmosphere that was common among them. The atmosphere of miracles, signs and wonders. Now, but before we get to that atmosphere, I want us to exhaust what is in this bracket. We have not exhausted it. Let's look at the bracket again. Are you in the bracket? Let's read the bracket. One to go. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's pork. They were all, remember that at this point, they were already multitude. And the multitude of them that believe, Acts 4 verse 32, and the multitude of them that believe, they are already multitude. And then multitude are still joining them. If you look at verse 14, he say, And believers we are the more added to the Lord. Multitudes, both of men and women. Yet, they were meeting together in one place. When you read that with good news or NIV, he said, they met regularly. They met what? Regularly. They, were to, they met together regularly. This is an atmosphere of regular fellowship. Regular meetings. That is among... We have seen this before. That they were meeting daily. Do you remember? Listen carefully. It's an attack. A serious attack. On the advancement of the kingdom. On the revival we are talking about. For any brother, any sister to think. That if we put meetings daily. 
that activity, you know, sometimes you see the flesh speaking, voicing, and you see somebody saying, activity is too much. Oh. Eh? We are uh, meeting on Monday. We are meeting on Sunday. We are meeting on... And you see some of you that are discipleship families. You are only meeting once in a week. I pity you. I'm watching you to see how you are going to progress. You are hearing me. I'm just watching you. You heard that we are, we are already meeting twice in a week. And you are still insisting on one. And we are watching you to see your, your, your breaking forth. No. They met regularly. Look at the revival. See, even the days we are not meeting, there must be meetings going on. There must be... See, we need to recover this atmosphere. It is insincerity for you to say, revival come, revival has come, or revival will come. When you are not ready to study the atmosphere of what revival is. I just observe that, I don't even know whether their fellowship is guided with time. Because I wonder the fellowship that started before Ananias arrived. And after three hours, the wife arrived. And after burying the wife, the fellowship continues. You are not getting me. I, I, I'm, I'm wondering the, the kind of, because these days you see canal people. Canal people will come to, to fellowship. The first day they will come, they will tell you, please, you are not, not ending on time. They start threatening you. They, I mean, serious threat. I say, you that just entered yesterday is telling me the time to do fellowship. Eh? You are telling me that you are going late. Oh my God, the level of flesh, the volume of flesh, volume of flesh in our time and generation is, is alarming. Volume. You will be going back the same, the same Sunday evening, for example. You will see unbelievers, father, mother, children, on the road, going for sightseeing. Some of them are, there is a particular junction as you are crossing, you see them entering. That's when they are entering for their ECU joint. I mean, do, they, are, they are going for their fellowship. As you are saying that uh, believers, this attack is too much. We are not progressing. We are not here for religion. We are here to recover heaven. On the, he said, thy kingdom come. How will the kingdom come? This thing we are doing. Look at many signs and wonders. How many has happened by your hand? How many? Tomorrow you are complaining that activity is too much. Is it not when you give the Holy Ghost time that it will work? Eh? You are saying that there is no miracle, there is no signs and wonders. And yet, when you come, you are checking your time. You want to time the Holy Ghost and plan yourself and, and fix him in. Come and see signs and wonders now. Are you getting me at all? We must learn to respect the Holy Ghost. We must learn to relax in the presence of God. These people are relaxed in the presence of God. They met regularly. All of them. They were all. The word all. I don't know how many times it has repeated in this study. Can you imagine how many times? It has come. Anytime he's talking about the brethren. All. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They were all uh, filled. They were all meeting. They were all of them in one act. All. All. That's why you don't tell me. Uh, thank God for online technology. But I pity any, any believer that we have a fellowship of the brethren and you are at home because the thing is live stream. Sometimes you see somebody who says is a, is a brother, is a sister in Enugu because you know that the thing is live stream. You stay in your house, you open your phone and you are watching. Before you know it, sleep will carry you and demon will come there to oppress you. You don't know what it means that we are two or more are gathered together. Which technology will remove Matthew 1820 from the Bible? Which tell me which online, which live streaming of service will remove Matthew 1820? Do you know what it means to gather together? He say Psalm 103. How good, how pleasant it is for what? For brethren to what? To gather together, to be united, to be together in a fellowship. And you are at home looking at plasma television and say you are following the service. And you know, sometimes our, our preachers also try to encourage this. Eh? You cannot ever remove this particular atmosphere. It characterizes this revival. They were meeting regularly. Somebody say meeting regularly. It is this regular meeting that keep on allowing the Holy Ghost to be working in them so that it can walk through them. 
Why is it, you know, some of us today, you want to raise the dead. As you pray, 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 the dead person is dead. You want to heal the sick, you pray, pray. Even fear self will not even allow you to heal the sick. Because there is no, you see, listen, everything is in volume. You have one naira, you have 1,000 naira. Are they the same? So when you fellowship with the Holy Ghost in one hour, you can't compare what will happen in your life with somebody who spent 10 hours in a fellowship and the spirit is working, working, working. Let's keep you know, fighting ourselves. Let's go to work Monday to Friday, spend eight hours in place of work. And when you come to fellowship, you are checking. It's too, too long ago. It's too long ago. Eh? It's too long ago. This fellowship is becoming long. If this man is not keeping time. Sometimes, when, anytime I hear that, I will ask you to come and to preach. Because, you see, when, when they call you to preach, that's when you know that preaching is a hard work. That's where you know, I, sometimes I will, I will have to, I mean, I have to shut down the mouth of some people by asking them to come and preach. Then you see how they will battle with time and fight and struggle. You think it's easy to be here. That's why you be in the congregation opening your mouth anyhow. Eh? That's, you see, the problem is that we, we, we want results, but we don't want to pay the price for results. We want to expand. But we don't want to give God the time for expansion. We are shaking time and giving God time and complaining. And you know, some people that will come late, there are people that will, that will tell you that you are not closing on time. People that came late. People that just began. They will come to dictate to you. These are agents of darkness. May, see, lift up your hands and say, Father, teach me to give you time. Personally. And when we gather together. Listen, this attack on our fellowship time must end. I, I mean it. I saw a revival that allow a proper fellowshipping among the brethren. And watch. Watch. Some of the people, whether you believe, listen carefully, whether you believe that they are of God or they are not of God, watch some of the ministries eh, or places where people will go and from morning, they are, they are there. Till afternoon. You know, sometimes you say, eh, the man is, a, is not a man of God. But people, when they are going there, they will pack their bag. The fellowship will begin in the morning. And, and before the man of God even come out, a lot of worship praises. And then they will come out and they will start his own. Six hours, they are still there. Tell me how God will not move. We want signs and wonders. We want miracles. But we are not ready to give time. We we'll give time to go to work. We we'll give time to go to school. We spend all kinds of time. We don't complain. We don't complain. Once in a week, you will come to complain. An attack has happened to us. And we must fight this spirit. And become free to fellowship with our God. Yes, we know that you can, you can pray alone. But we, there is a fellowship. There is a meeting together. They were all meeting together. Peter was meeting with them. James, John, nobody was above. Today you see a brother. Because you can speak in tongue. Because you can do one, one, one small miracle or the other. You become above fellowship. Eh? You become above fellowship. You don't attend fellowship anymore. Fellowship becomes something for... for junior ones, you are now ascending in realms and dimensions. You will not be able to fellowship with your brethren again. You started fellowship together. They are now, you are look, looking for where to preach, where to minister. I pray that God, God will recover this atmosphere. That's why we are here. We want to study it and see it and get it what? Recovered back. Amen. Now, Let's now look at the atmosphere of preaching. Look at verse 14. The atmosphere of preaching. Regular and constant and consistent preaching. I don't know what the time is reading, but let's move on. Verse 14, he said, And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women. Please pay attention. This is an effect of an activity. 
there is something that is going on. People don't repent unless you preach the gospel to them. It is the Holy Ghost that will tell you the secret behind the multitude. Are you following me? Coming to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, please listen. If we are not ready to preach the gospel, we should just forget about this matter. Because these brethren, when they finish their fellowship, they are entering houses. The same Acts chapter 5, verse 28. They, 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 they are hindering. They arrested them. They were asking them, did we not strictly warn you that you should not preach or teach in this name again? He said, but behold, despite our warning, you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching. We warn you not to teach in this name, but despite you defied our warning and you feel everywhere with this preaching, with this teaching. This is to tell you, to give you a picture that they are not only meeting together, they are also what? Preaching and teaching. By the time they finish, I mean, you know, beating them and all of that and release them. Look at verse 40, 41. The Bible says, and they departed from the, the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Verse 42, read it together with me. One to go. And daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Daily. In every house. What is every house? Every house. In the temple. They are teaching. In every house. They are teaching. They are preaching. So, daily. Why are we not preaching daily? Why are we not teaching daily? Why are we not going to every house? Why? This is an atmosphere. They cannot rest. They are not encouraging them. You know, remember what we said. When people are living in sin, it's difficult to preach. Remember? It's difficult to preach. That is to tell you that these brethren, they have been delivered from sin. Righteousness, holiness, atmosphere. So they are free to preach, to teach in every house. We must recover this daily preaching lifestyle. We must recover the atmosphere of it is this preaching that is converting the multitudes. Converting the multitudes to the Lord. When you see the fellowship meeting empty, excuse me, go out. Stop meeting on weekly basis. As you are meeting on weekly basis, you will come this week, you are 10. From Mon Sunday to Sunday, you didn't go out to preach the gospel to anybody. And then you are expecting people to come and become move from 10 to 12. You know what will happen? The 10 you have last Sunday will reduce to 8 the following Sunday. Before your very eyes, two seats empty. The following Sunday again, it will reduce to what? To 6. That's what, see, we must, we must get radical about preaching. About preaching. You have seen that that we have multitude of church and preachings everywhere or people saying that I am that does not mean revival you have seen it the question is what is the atmosphere what is the atmosphere of people that feel church on sunday morning what kind of life what what is the atmosphere in that church sinners in the church sinners in the fellowship sinners everywhere that's not the revival the revival carries atmosphere and we have to recover it and then we have to be start preaching preaching. It is preaching that brings souls. You know what I was telling you people yesterday? What did I tell you yesterday? Tell me the reason why we should not be on outreach every week. Tell me why this equipment will be here and it will not be preaching the gospel to people in the streets. Tell me why weekends will be there and you will have walked in your place of work Monday to Friday and you cannot move out on Saturday Sunday to preach the gospel to people in your streets. What are we doing? Where is the, the revival we, we, are, we are seeing in, we are reading? Okay, you go to work by 7 o'clock and you come back by 6 or by what happened on weekends? Preaching. We want people to repent. We want multitude to come to Christ. But we want that to happen at no cost. Eh? We must recover this atmosphere of preaching. Yes, we must. We must. 
And listen, I just noticed that it is their preaching that gave rise to signs and wonders. Long time they have for a bold day. Speaking boldly in the Lord. Who granted that signs and wonders will be done by their hands? Acts chapter 14 verse 3. Look at it. Long time therefore, about day. Acts 14 3. Are you there? Let's read it together. I want to go. Long time therefore, about day, speaking boldly in the Lord, which granted, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their. I want you to see that signs and wonders is a product of preaching. How many of you want to do signs and wonders? Miracles. Miracles is not done until you become a radical preacher. Are you hearing me? I read about an abonki. I read a 1,000 page book of his life um, biography. 1,000. He wrote it himself. He was sharing on how he started in Lesotho. Lesotho. He said he preaches three times every day. In the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. In the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. As of that time, no sign, no wonder was happening. Nothing. No miracle. He was just preaching. He was just preaching. Every day. The first time that miracle ever happened by his hand was several years after. But people were repenting as he was preaching. Are you following me? Today, okay, not even today because he has died. By the time you see him, I mean, having a crusade and people, some of us will look at him and say, I want to be like Kiranabonki. And so we go and say, please lay hands on me. I read throughout his life biography. I didn't see where he was running to anybody to lay hands on him. Preaching. Consistent, consistency. It is the atmosphere of preaching that gave rise to atmosphere of miracles, signs and what? Wonders. You don't want to preach. You want to do miracle. By which spirit? It is the Lord that gave testimony. Are you getting that? It is the Lord that is bearing witness to your preaching. You don't have preaching and you want the Lord to bear witness to what? Signs and wonders, miracles are only the Lord bearing witness to your preaching. Let me tell your neighbor, we must re be ready to go out and preach. See, this is not just let us uh, talk in the morning and then after that we go away. It is time. It is time to do what God is saying to us. Yes, it is time. I want you to rise on your feet and pray. Because if we don't pray and act, eh, it will be like we are just uh, trying to entertain ourselves and charge ourselves and make ourselves happy. We need to begin to practice what we are hearing. The atmosphere of revival. It is atmosphere of righteousness, atmosphere of holiness, atmosphere of purity, atmosphere of regular fellowship, atmosphere of regular preaching, atmosphere of signs and wonders. Can you begin to pray over your own life? The ways that the Lord has challenged you this morning and ask God to help you. We are rising because we must recover the revival back. We can't be answering a revival level, and our 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 level will just be, I mean, nothing related to revival. There is no revival in the level until we recover the atmosphere of what true and genuine revival should be. Ah, please pray for yourself.